This was my traditional cover three that I've been running for years and a lot of success and I love it and I'm not abandoning it. But it's a pretty much traditional cover three. If you didn't get the original DVDs, we were a spot dropping team. So this, this backer was dropping at roughly 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, a yard on top of the numbers. They dropped at 12, a yard inside the hash, 12, a yard inside the hash, 10 on top of the numbers. And the nice thing that we, that we did, and another good concept I got from my good buddy Tim Murphy is basically, and the math doesn't always work perfectly, but I think to our kids, think of yourself in a 10 by 10 box. So if I get in the middle, I only have to guard five yards this way, five yards this way, five yards in front of me, and five yards in back. And my preference would be is that they, and towards the back of their zone, and they play the back of their zone with their body. In other words, anybody who's in the back of their zone, they should be manned up on them and play the front of the zone with their eyes. So if they flood the zone, and I have a wide receiver here, and a wide receiver here, shallow flat, deep flat. I'm gonna get back here and play the deep flat and rally to the flat up, 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 up in front of me. So play the back of your zone physically, physically, and play the front of your zone with your eyes. So everybody has a, a 10 by 10 box they have to, have, to, have to guard. This is our no cover zone. We don't guard anything under five yards. We don't cover anything on the sideline from the numbers over. That's a seven yard strip. No cover zone, seven yard strip. And this is a hard area to cover. That's where the revolver falcon comes in. It's hard to get a whole player right there. So that's our kill zone. That's a kill shot. If a catch catches that ball there, we're expecting both backers to hit him from the side and the safety to come up so that he'll think twice about catching it again. So that's what we've been doing. That's our base cover three. I'm not talking about in this video. I'm going to tell you how we took this coverage and put our robber concept into it. When I got to Fresno, I hired a new D coordinator who had been Tim Murphy's D coordinator for many, many years. And he showed me this split field concept and it's made it really easy in our kids. So our kids, we don't call an entire formation. So if you're on this side of the formation, you just see this as pro. That's a pro, tight end, receiver. You don't care what's over there. You don't care if it's twins, trips, quads, whatever. You just have pro, you have a tight end single, or you have a single, okay? The other two things you can get is twins and trips. That's the only five things you can get lined up at you. That's the only five things. Um, probably the only other thing that you can get is like this twins look. You can get a slot, a slot in there like that, but we treat our slots, if they're in here one by one or two by two, we treat that as a tight end. We treat that as a tight end. So this would be, um, uh, this would be pro. We just would treat that as a pro. If they bring this wing in and sit him like that, okay, that would still be a pro for us. Our alignments on the edges would change, okay, and it'd be something we'd rep that week. But really, that's what you can see. It really made our kids um, jobs easier. So our falcon is saying down in distance. The kids on this side are yelling whatever they got on their side, and the kids on this side are yelling what they have on that side. It does allow you to do combo coverages. I'm not getting into combo coverages. I want my kids reacting, not thinking. But all the stuff I studied, a lot of these robber teams, they'll rob on one side and man on the back side. They rob on one side and they, they zone on the uh, whatever, banjo it. You can cloud on one side, sky on the other side. This allows you to do combo coverages and it makes it easy for the kids.